We are live on DSTV Channel 421, Go TV Channel 125, all social media handles and around the world on myjoyonline.com. Our headlines, President Akufuado admit for the first time the power crisis that has bedeviled Ghanaians for months now as he thanks Ghanaians for being patient with his government. The challenges that the people of Ashanti and indeed of other parts of the country have had to endure in very recent times over the supply of power. And I can only thank you for the patience you have exhibited in the face of these challenges. We'll hear from the Energy Minister as he takes on naysayers who he said doubted they could pull off the project. Also, government begins uh, to receive bid from the private sector to complete the abandoned Saglami housing project. Uh, details as a minority in parliament say they are opposed to the plan and want the government to fully complete the project or leave it for future NDC governments to complete it. And has the free SHS policy indeed benefited more than 5 million students? As claimed by both the education minister and the president, we have more details as joint users independent checks of the free SHS data show contradictions. My name is Carlos Caloni. Thank you so much for choosing us. Now, let's begin from the president, where President Akufuado has, for the first time, admitted to the challenges in the energy sector that has forced many to live without electricity, sometimes for days, and has grounded to a halt some businesses that are heavily dependent on electricity. He was speaking at the recommissioning of the Ameri plant, which is now called Kumasi One Thermal uh, Power Plant in the Ashanti region. And it is my expectation that with enhanced electricity supply, these enterprises will expand and offer further employment opportunities to our youth. Ladies and gentlemen, in the course of the last seven years, my government has had the opportunity to translate promises and assurances into result oriented projects, especially as the Ghanaian people have in clear and absolute terms demanded results that will transform the country for all. One such commitment is the del delivery of affordable and reliable electricity to drive our nation's industrialization agenda and position Ghana to become a net exporter of electricity in the ECOWAS region. Our national electrification rate of 88.8% is one of the highest on the continent. And the goal is to have full electricity access by the end of this year. In the areas of power generation, transmission and distribution, my government has made and continues to make significant investments towards the provision of reliable and competitively priced electricity to assure economic growth. This is part of our commitment to realizing the 2030 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I do acknowledge Regional Minister, Minister for Energy, Ladies and gentlemen and Nananum, the challenges that the people of Ashanti and indeed of other parts of the country have had to endure in very recent times over the supply of power. And I can only thank you for the patience you have exhibited in the face of these challenges. Now, Energy Minister Matthew Opoku Prempre took on naysayers who he said doubted they could pull off the project. And I do that quite for a good tea, a B, a C, an A, A. No cream, Obina Serbia, Uncle Bay. Obina Serbia, old Timinia BT, and I do Osia Wasano, Osa, no Achia, Nepa. Gana, but you may be a row ABS. And so, be a Musa said, I didn't echo her. If a soldier, I'm a Ghana here. And see what I could say, Kwame Kumabreso, and see what I could say, 
a champo a breso, a boa, a sea war, bui, pezacofo a breso, a sea, a war, tacrade, president runners a breso, and then another, the Dunk Kufuado, the Sida Sukumasia, or Sukumasa for Adena AAB, there be Ghana and the Echetri, Ghana and the Echetri. Sir, and there every year by him, Sir, and you know, can you hear me? Hey, said the VIA for Kayano, Sir, I am here. Nukreni, Brody Baka, a free 2014. And a Greek call for the VIA for you know who said, Say, I perceive a new Kanye Jinaya, and was here, Shia, say, a year before, Gan and Fifriha, a Santima Munina. And so, so, men can say, Oh, being persuaded you, the way you have your body, the way and an Ado Dankwa, a Kufu Ado. So that the energy minister basically lauding the president for the initiative we saw earlier today. Now shifting our attention to education, the Free Senior High School uh, initiative stands as a prominent political campaign commitment in Ghana's fourth republic, ranking at the forefront of the Akufuado administration's flagship program. Now moving forward to 2024, both President Akufuado and Education Minister Yaose Iduchom have claimed that the total number of beneficiaries has surpassed 5 million. But how accurate is this arithmetic? Uh, Join News' research desk has uh, some more in the following report. The Free Senior High School Initiative stands as a prominent political campaign commitment in Ghana's Fourth Republic, ranking at the forefront of the Ekufuadu administration's flagship programs. The program's implementation began in September 2017, targeting first-year students in public senior high schools and technical vocational institutions. Importantly, any Ghanaian child plays in a public second cycle institution through the computerized school selection and placement system during the 2017 school placement process became entitled to benefit from the Free Senior High School Initiative. By December 6, 2017, the Ministry of Education's program-based budget revealed that a total of 359,023 beneficiaries were enrolled in the program. These included first-year students in public senior high and technical schools consisting of 117,926 day students and 241,094 boarding students. Moving forward to 2024, both President Kufuado and Education Minister have made claims that the total number of beneficiaries have surpassed 5 million. This accession has sparked controversy and raised questions about the accurate count of beneficiaries since the program's inception. During the launch of the Smart School program, project on March 25th, the president, when he mounted the stage to speak, reiterated the total number of beneficiaries under the free senior high school program. 5.10 million children having so far benefited from this SHS policy since it was instituted in September 2017. On the same podium, the president and his education minister could not sink from the same hymn book as they gave varying accounts of the total number of beneficiaries under the program. In fact, there was a discrepancy between the figures provided by the president and his education minister, Dr. Yao Ose Educhum. When it was said free senior high school was impossible, the government went ahead to prove otherwise and today some 5.7 million children who are own children brothers and sisters have benefited from the program. The difference in numbers has raised suspicion regarding the actual total number of beneficiaries under the free senior high school program, adding to the existing confusion surrounding the reported figure of 5 million beneficiaries. Let's approach this analysis by focusing on one of President Tekufado's statements. Some 503,000 children enter senior high school this year. The highest ever enrollment of children into senior high school in a single year in our history. This raises significant question. If the current enrollment of 503,000 is indeed the highest in Ghana's history, then how is it possible for over 5 million children to have benefited from the program in just six academic years? Unless the government is using a different methodology, it is difficult to understand how the total beneficiaries in six years could surpass 5 million when the highest enrollment in the period under review does not even reach 600,000. Even if the highest enrollment 
enrollment of 503,000 was recorded in all six academic years, the total number of children covered by the free senior high school program will not exceed 3.1 million. In fact, according to data from the free senior high school secretariat, the total number of enrollment, including both senior high schools and technical and vocational education training from 2017 to 2021-2022 academic year was 2 million and 89,430. Even if we generously use the president's highest enrollment figure of 503,000 for the remainder of the years, the total number would not still add up to 5 million mentioned by the president and his education minister. So, how did the government arrive at the 5.7 million total beneficiary statistics? Could it be that each child was counted multiple times for each year spent under the program? Definitely, government needs to provide a transfer transparent explanation for these arithmetic discrepancies. Now still on education, the president of the Academic City uh, College University, Fred Magbagon Lurie, is charging government to prioritize the utilization of data in its digitalization. Uh, speaking at the launch of the Data Science and Analytics Graduate Program of the Academic City University College, uh, Fred Magbagon Lurie called for a concerted approach in developing the infrastructural sector of the country. There's more in the following report. Yes, is a study of data to extract meaningful insights for business and in drafting of government policies. It is a multidisciplinary approach that combines principles and practices from the fields of mathematics, statistics, artificial intelligence and computer engineering to analyze large amounts of data. President of the Academic City University College, Fred McBagonluri, who spoke at the launch of the Data Science Master's Program spearheaded by the University College, is pushing for the prioritization and effective implementation of data science strategies in ensuring the development of the country. He considers this a crucial step towards the advancement of not only the financial sector of the country, but also the infrastructure sector. Data for information, for governance um, are crucial. We need to know how many engineers we need in the next 25 years. We need to know how many doctors we need in the next 35 years. You know, if you don't, then how do you prioritize where to put your educational investment? So if data science is the next big thing, if AI is the next big thing, it is time for us to develop a national strategy around that. You know, recently I said in the media that we tend to focus on the regulatory aspect of things when we don't even understand the fundamental imperatives of the things that we want to regulate. So if you want to develop a regulatory framework for AI, you first need to know as a nation what do we need to do with AI to develop? If you want to put structures around data, we need to understand what kinds of data do we need to collect to inform governance. And then you can put policies around how to regulate it. With data being a significant factor and a competitive edge in the contemporary business landscape, technology management expert David Go says gathering and collating the necessary data could turn the economic fortunes of the country around. Government agencies collect vast amount of data related to housing, healthcare, education, and national security. Today we have a national security um, professionals with us. They collect a lot of data. This data serves as the bedrock for informed policy decisions. For example, census data, workforce statistics, financial information. The data analytics, data science analytics program is a catalyst for capacity building. Beyond national development, let us explore how this program will significantly contribute to building the capacity of ICT professionals in Ghana. These professionals will drive innovation, enhance decision making, and contribute to the digital transformation of public and private sector organizations. Director of Tertiary Education at the Ghana Education Service, Professor Francis Nunu, reaffirmed the government's commitment to data advancement, further charging industry players to always seek to improve in the ever-changing technological world. We are doing smart classrooms, where the classrooms will have interactive setup. We are doing student-centered type of learning, where we put students together and then you discuss practical issues. All these are in preparation for the AI and all those sort of things, so that students will not just pick them and not put them in contest. 
Okay, so the teacher is being prepared, the classroom is being prepared, the laboratories are being prepared. The school seeks to revolutionize the way companies operate in the country with the introduction of this course. Stephen Menzel's report read to you. Now, the National Petroleum Authority, Custom Preventive Service, the National Security and other stakeholders are racing against time to salvage crude oil from a vessel reported to have split up and rode to the thermal port. Now, the incident is reported to our credit on Friday around Old Ningo, where the vessel was forced to do an emergency docking while on its way to offload crude oil at the thermal port. A public relations officer of the National Petroleum Authority, Abdul Kudus, Mohammed tells a joy news evacuation efforts are still underway to prevent a possible spillage. The information I have, I don't speak directly to the reason for the problem that the ship developed. It says that we had we had um, an information or call it a request for an emergency evacuation of the crude oil in that vessel. Um, because of the mechanical um, fault that it generated and that would not allow it to reach its intended place for betting and uh, a discharging. And so the um, approval was granted to their request and the relevant organizations that play role in the, um, this particular matter of fuel importation and discharge were all invited and played various roles in having to have the product evacuated. So it was um, uh, the crude oil meant for one of the refineries in Accra. And so after the permission was granted, DRVs were arranged by the refinery to have the fuel um, evacuated to the intended location that is around as being text by Aquaba Refinery. And so basically that was that they needed the approval. The approval was granted. The evacuation was actually being done. And that was to um, salvage the product from actually going waste. Now, Kwame Yanka is our Tema correspondent and joins us on the phone line for more. Uh, Kwame, you have been to the place. Where exactly did this incident happen? Um, sorry, could you come again? I'm saying that uh, you've been to the place. We understand it happened in Ningo, but where precisely in Ningo did this happen? Okay, so this is at um, Anyam, at the um, old Ningo, in the Ningo Pampam district. That's the alley where uh, the incident happened uh, on the sea. So that is from Pram Pram, you go to New Ningo, and then you go to Old Ningo, Ningo the next yeah, community, Ningo, and then which old is Ningo. Amyo. All right, so yeah. what is the situation as we speak? Okay, so... Um, the certain stakeholders from the security agencies to the state institutions, um, National Petroleum Authority, General Maritime Authority, um, Customs, National Security, Defense Intelligence, they are all working around the clock to ensure that um, you know, by tomorrow or later Friday, um, they should be done with salvaging of the, of the contents of this um, vessel, w w which has played. So do we know if this um, is having any impact at all uh, on the activities of fisher folks or residents of Amiam? So that was the earlier year. But then um, what you've made to understand that um, they're taking all the precautionary measures to ensure that uh, there, isn't that, um, there wouldn't be any impact as far as this very exercise of operation is concerned on the lives of um, be it marine lives or um, lives and properties in the area. But all right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Kwame Yanka is our Tema correspondent, giving us updates on the situation there in Old Ningo. Uh, but moving on, still around Ningo, government has tonight commenced an active search for private partners to help complete the abandoned Saglemi affordable housing project commenced under the SWAL NDC administration. The project has been entangled in allegations of corruption with a former Works and Housing Minister, Collins Dowda, standing trial. The project, which is at various stages of completion, have had some uh, fittings, including uh, beggar proof material, plumbing works, uh, metal coverings on culverts, among others, at the site, either vandalized or stolen. Government is targeting about $100 million from the private sector to complete the project. Uh, speaking at an event to uh, invite proposals from the private sector, Works and Housing Minister Kojo Ponkrumah said Ghanaians were tired of abandoned housing projects when the housing deficit is ballooning. 
I want to ask you to execute this task with the highest level of patriotism and professionalism. So I want to ask you to bring to this task your highest level of patriotism and professionalism uh, as it is deserved or required. Um, let the desire to do our best for our republic show as you go through this process. Uh, my final point to you is that Ghanaians want the phenomenon of um, uncompleted or abandoned uh, mass housing projects to come to an end. Uh, to date, some of the projects from the Kufo era are still uncompleted and hanging. This one uh, is still yet to be completed. And it adds to the narrative that we don't finish projects when we start. If we have a housing deficit of 1.8 million that we are trying to reduce as the years go by, already there are about 40,000 units a year that we deliver as a country. It's not enough to close the gap. So if all of these projects keep hanging out there, it will even deter future uh, projects uh, from being embarked upon. And that's why it's important that we take advantage of this opportunity to reverse this trend. And so I charge you to go through this process with all the professionalism, patriotism, and transparency uh, as you have outlined in your report to me. Now, according to the ministry, the deadline for the submission and evaluation of proposals is from July 9 to 15, 2024. But the minority say they are opposed to this. The NDC MPs believe this effort is just an attempt to hand the project over to persons close to the government. A deputy ranking member on the Works and Housing Committee, Andrew Darichi, which he says, if government cannot mobilize the needed resources to complete the project, it should leave it for a future NDC government to do so. We will not support the idea of subsidizing the Sacramento housing project. Uh, as it stands now, and the state at which the project got to, government just needed to, to complete the project for the people of Ghana. The magnitude of work that was done there, to the extent that we even had the Western Housing Minister there, uh, that was on our touch here, indicating that that project was one of the best projects in the country. And that was one of the reasons why you, he went away ahead to recommend payment for the contractor then. Thieves went in there and took off all the fittings. And now government has come to devalue the project and want to sell it to cronies. This is something that we must all stand against. Mm, honorable, but will, will, will this make any difference? The government tells you that they just don't have enough money right now to be able to complete the project on their own. And this for this reason that they want to bring in a private investor. Government later on has no show interest in the project. And so for us, we think that government doesn't have to sell the project. It won't be long. NDC will come to power and then we'll complete the project and hand it over to Ghana. Uh, we, we are not going to support that. Andre Dari Chiwite is deputy ranking member on the Works and Housing Committee in Parliament. Now, still on the power sector, persistent gadget repairs and thousands of a city's loss in discarded fish and meat products. That is the story of cold store operators at the erratic, as the erratic power supply continues to bite hard on businesses. Today on our Doomsaw Diaries, my colleague James Avergi takes us to the Malata market here in Accra, where cold store operators count their losses, calling on government to produce a timetable on the outages. From here, in the heart of Malata market in Accra to explore the Doomsaw Diary, of operators of frozen food shops, your popular cold stores. The buzzing business of buying and selling is the demand for frozen foods, fish, meat, and others. At least today, the lights are on in the market, but operators of these cold stores, just like you and I, have been battling a peculiar problem in the past few months. Doom so. The leaders need to be honest with us on this power issue. They can turn off the lights early in the morning and bring it back very late in the evening. Why are they not paying for coming with us? If it's not to do so, then what is it? Chocho, -cho, one of the owners of the cold stores here, tells me on several occasions he has had to dispose of some product 
which went bad because of the unstable power supply. The cost of the fish has also gone up. The ones we used to buy for 100 cities now sells for between 400 to 600 cities. The moment the fish becomes tender, no one wants to buy them. We are usually left with no option than to dispose of the cold foods that have gone bad. We are pleading with government to resolve the power crisis. Another trader, Aja, says three weeks ago, when the doom shop became intense, tens of cartons of fish and meat products in his cold room went bad, running into loss of thousands of cities. The last time I true How many, what's the amount? Amount. Yes. Wow. You know our chicken cutting is three twenty. Twenty cities per one cutting. The last time I threw about ten boxes away. Yeah. And the fishes. The fish, the salmon to a cutting is thousand uh thousand thirty. Thousand thirty. Thirty cities. We threw about four, five away. Because of all smell and sport. Yeah. Did you have to, I mean, after that, what happens? You have to bear the cost, you move on, you buy a new one, and then you, you start? That one, the yeah, cost on. So far, that one is for, you have to put different money into the business again. So we can't blame the government to come and give us any money now. So it's our mistake. Another cost the coastal managers bear is the purchase of spare parts to repair their gadget, which now breaks down consistently due to the flickering power. The moment the light starts going off and on, it damages our machines. And these machines are expensive to repair. We are always incurring losses. At this point, I grew interest in why Chocho and Aja are unable to provide alternative power to protect their investment. Do you have generator you use for your... mini bio. I do not have a generator as a backup because I sell at the market. It is an open space. The noise from the generator will disturb traders and customers. Not that we can't buy a generator, but here we are now. We don't have a space here to mount that generator at us now. But in the middle of all this, Aja says officials of the ECG have visited their shops to already inform them about a possible bill increment. How much approximately do you pay in a month? This prepaid. This prepaid. Yeah, and so you can you, uh, buy thousand five two thousand. Thousand five two thousand in a month. Yeah. For your prepaid. Yeah. I mean, but uh, we've seen some communications that the ECG is asking for more increment on the bill. Yeah, it's true. They even came here. They came here. Yeah. Oh, okay. But we, our good room, if they break, we off it. In the even they on it, yeah. I mean, if they increase the bill, but there is no doom saw or light out, would you be willing to pay? Oh, yeah, yeah. If there's no doom saw or light out, the business is going on, we can pay whatever we get. Let's cross over live to Kumasi, where a group of Ghanaians are demonstrating their over the doom source situation, Nanayao is on the line to speak to us. Nanayao, what is the latest on this particular demonstration uh, ongoing? in the Euphoricum constituency where a group calling itself Youth for Asantiman is backing on the protest against the Energy Ministry and the Energy Minister Dr. Matthew Poko Prempe, the ECD to demand a load shedding timetable. You can see a number of people um, walking through the principal street of Euphoricum um, to demand the ECD to release a load shedding timetable. Earlier, the President Akufuado um, commissioned the Kumase One Thermal Power Plant, which he says is going to contribute to the national grid and also help um, maintain or sustain electricity um, supply in the middle part of the country and alongside the northern part. Um, the, the group here are rather demanding President Akofuado, the Minister of Edu um, Energy and then the ECG to rather release a load shedding timetable for them to also get to know what is going on in the energy sector, when they are to expect doom so and when not to expect doom so. I have uh, the NDC General Secretary for the Ashanti region here. He's also a member of this group and he's also leading the protest. Well, what are your major concerns? Thank you very much. Our major concern is one we are demanding 
that His Excellency Nana Adodakwa Kufuado, who is paid with my sweat, who is paid with my taxes, at least have some iota of respect for the people of Ghana and especially Ashantiman, and at least let us know when we will have light and when we will not have light. The energy minister told us that we should publish our timetable. So we are here to publish our timetable. We are here to tell them and serve notice that tomorrow we are taking the lights of Flagstaff House and we are giving those uh, shared energy to KJTR Market. We are taking the light of Baumier's House and we are giving it to Asawasa Market. We are taking that of Napo and we are giving it to Atonsu Market. And if they can survive the three days without light, then they will know and understand and appreciate the pain we are feeling that the Doomsaw is collapsing our work, is collapsing our businesses. The second concern for us is that they came into power for eight years without any plan of investing into the power sector. And they have not added even a single megawatt of power to the energy grid, forgetting that the population is growing, energy demand is growing, and they are now into a spree of renaming projects and stealing projects. We are telling them that Ameri will forever remain the brainchild and the project of His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. We will not allow him to steal projects and rename all our tertiary institutions and now come and be renaming power plants. When are they renaming car power? When are they renaming Kajetia Market? When are they renaming Kumau uh, Hospital? When are they renaming Asawasi Market? We are saying that enough is enough and we are here to equally preach hope to the people of Ashantiman that hope is coming, that the Excellency John Dramani Mahama, as long as the Lord lives, shall be the next president of the Republic of Ghana, and that the good people of Ashanti region, we are ready to vote him into power come December 7, 2024. All right, thank you so much. So, Carlos, that is the uh, NDC General Secretary here in the Ashanti region. Uh, a very tense moment here um, on the principal streets of, of, of Kumasi as, as, the, as the number of people join the protest to demand a load shedding timetable. And so we'll, we'll be bringing you up to speed details as to what happens here in the Ashanti region. Carlos, over to you. Thank you so much. That's my colleague, uh, Nana Boachi uh, Yadom, uh, bringing us live pictures from Kumasi, where uh, a lot of uh, residents are really demonstrating over the Doomsaw situation. You're still watching Join News Prime with me, Carlos Caloni. We'll return with more Pistain. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us to some uh, election related story. Election headquarters is brought to you by Petrosoil, your clean fuel in full quantity and chartered Institute of Management Accountants and the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants together as the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants. Election headquarters for an informed electorate. Now, Alan Tremonton is promising an all-inclusive grassroots focused government if voted into power as president as he outdoors the newly formed Alliance for Revolutionary Movement. Uh, speaking at the launch, Mr. Chairman outlined what he terms the transformational agenda, which includes reducing unemployment, fighting corruption, and roadmap towards Ghana's economic recovery. My colleague Kenneth Jesse has more in the following report. Former Trade Minister Alan Chermatin has officially outdoored the new movement made up of a coalition of more than 10 political and social movements of which he is a leader. Alliance for Revolutionary Change is the name. Mr. Chermantin outlined his vision for a more inclusive and progressive Ghana, highlighting key policy areas such as economic empowerment, healthcare reform and education access. Actually, in a new type of leadership in Ghana. Leadership that is visionary, competent, accountable, transparent, action-oriented, resource-driven, and compassionate. A leadership, a leadership that will fight corruption ruthlessly and lead by example, and not provide a safe haven for corrupt political appointees and other public officials. 
implementing transformational policies. Governance is about policy making and execution. What Ghana needs now are transformational policies in all sectors, namely in the macroeconomy, in the productive sectors, including industry, trade, agriculture, tourism, in infrastructure development, in social services delivery, including health, education, and sports. Speaker after speaker, leaders of the other movement groups promised to make constitutional amendments to favor the old Narragenian, help fight corruption, and ensure economic prosperity if voted into power. The Alliance for Revolutionary Change is here to once more rekindle the embers of a dying flame that we saw burning brightly in our first republic. The wings of the butterfly are to breathe air into that embers of, or the embers of that flame and rekindle it to burn more brightly and show us a new way. The great transformation plan that has been proposed by our leader, Alan Kojotri Mantin, will be our main and driving force into a new prosperity that will be for all of us and not just for a few of us. This is his promise and we are all going to hold his waist and raise him up so he can deliver that promise to you. That is why you must vote for him as your first independent presidential candidate of Ghana. Our, our constitution, 1992 constitution, has been the problem of this great loot and share uh, uh, syndrome. I joined this alliance because we want a constitutional review to, to, to reduce the excessive powers we pose on the executive arm of government. We, join, we are joining this alliance to ensure that separation of powers is adhered to. The alliance, as I see it, is going to give Ghanaians the opportunity to be treated not because they hold political card, but because they are Ghanaians. And that is exactly what we want, because partisanship, the only thing it does is that it divides us, it segregates us. And that is what our colonial masters left, to divide and rule. And that's the reason why we are not making strides as citizens. The newly formed movement, which started with Alan Chematin's movement for change, has expanded to include the Ghana Green Party, National Interest Movement, Crusaders Against Corruption, and several other social and political movements who believe it is time for the duopoly of the NDC and the MPP to be broken. From the UPSA Auditorium, Kenneth Jesse for Joy News. Now, flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress, John Dramani Mahama, is surprised. The government is taking credit for some uh, project of district assemblies in its performance tracker. Comparing the tracker to the NDC's Green Book published during his administration, the former president said what was produced under his regime was evidence-based. Addressing some members of the clergy and imams in the northeast region, Mr. Mahama asked the electorates to vote out the NPP for poor performance. We'll bring you this particular story in our subsequent uh, bulletins. But uh, moving on, uh, the United Kingdom uh, and other countries uh, which have been part of this whole celebration also have been talking. But before we go to that story, uh, Syngenta, the world's leading agriculture company, has launched its new product known as Pegado Ultra 22.5 WG. 
This is to help eliminate black pulp disease in cocoa farms. Uh, at the launch in Achim Bonso in the eastern region, country manager of Syngenta Kinsley Adadi said the Pagoda Ultra has excellent control of phytophthora of cocoa and provides a long-lasting protection for the cocoa plant. Cocoa farmers have for years been struggling to deal with black pot disease outbreaks, a dreaded disease that causes cocoa pores to blacken and rot. The black pot disease occurs mainly during the raining season. The economic impact on the cocoa industry and mainly on the farmers cannot be overemphasized. Speaking at a ceremony to launch Syngenta's Pegado Ultra, a fungicide that can combat black pot disease, the country manager of Syngenta, Kinsley Adade, guaranteed industry players that the Pegado Ultra has excellent control of Phytophthora of cocoa due to the complete action on all disease stage, visual and non-visual symptoms. The product, he said, delivers long-lasting protection. If it's a Pegado, if it's a Pegado, a Drosum, a German, so we are a dry, ya shed a for cocoa. Every farmer must use Pagada Ultra, which provides long-lasting protection for cocoa. One thing about the Pagada Ultra is that it lasts and even if you spray after one hour, it remains on the crop. When it rains, the rains do not wash away the drug. The Pedago Ultra must be sprayed monthly, and we will keep educating farmers on this. <laughs> Welcome at the moment. You've been waiting for showbiz this year with the queen of showbiz. Um, she's already in studio. Yeah, yeah. What's up? What do we have? Uh, we have something about Mr. Drew uh, so because Jam Rock Bar and Event Center has sued Ghanaian artist Andrew Nee, Komi Otu, popularly known as Mr. Drew, for failing to perform at their event, Dab Easter Dance Party with Mr. Drew, which was slated for Monday, April 1, 2024, at Isu Jaman. According to the organizers, Mr. Drew pulled out of the event, though he was paid 50% of the performance fee before the show. The management of Jamrock had earlier indicated in a press statement dated April 2, 2024, that all was set for the event to take place. But the artist, Mr. Drew, pulled out of the event when he, he was supposed to mount the stage without any reason or explanation to the organizers in a writ of summons issued by the District Magistrate Court saying she on April 15, 2024, Jamrock Bar and Event Center is demanding the recovery of 15,000 Ghana cities, being money the plaintiff paid to uh, Mr. Dew to perform at the event but failed to do so and the refund of the money annulled since February 12, 2024. It also seeks an order for the recovery of special damages amounting to 36,511 cities uh, being directed costs incurred by the plaintiff in connection with the events, the general damages of 200,000 against the defendant for the severe damage caused to the plaintiff's brand as a result of the cancellation of the event. So that's it about mm. Mr. Drew. Uh, this should be a lesson to uh, all creatives. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're being the paid, it's is huge. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's huge. You pay. Well, I don't know the excuse that he has, okay. but this is in court. They're suing him because he failed so, to show up at an event that you're being paid for. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, yeah. they learn 
from, uh, from, from, from Mr. Drew's like case. This. But this evening is uh, Wednesday mm. and we're uh, putting the spotlight on one incredible comedian. He's mm. called Beneza. Uh, you don't know him. He's actually an architect. And okay. I'm very excited to introduce him mm. uh, to you here on Join His Prime. 2016, when I was a student at KNUST, my final year, and then I've been pushing through, uh, so roughly about eight years now. Yeah, but I used to do it like a hobby kind of because I was in architecture school. I finished, I did a management service. I worked in an architecture firm for a while, then I stopped, uh, I decided to freelance to make more time. So I stopped at nine to five, and I do comedy on weekends, architecture on weekdays. So that is, that's how it's been for about the last four years. I've been doing comedy consistently. I've done my own shows in Kumasi. I'm actually uh, reside in Kumasi. So I do shows in Kumasi, then I come and do one in Accra, and then I commute between Kumasi and Accra. So that has been a journey so far. How does that work, Kumasi? And uh, because I know that everything is happening here in Accra. Do we have like a, a, an industry there in Kumasi? Because I know that. Almost all of them, all, all of all of you. Yeah, there's a whole big industry over there. Sometimes when Obi did uh, Popular But Broke, he actually did it first in Kumase before here. We have many amazing comedians. I have many people who are like ahead of me. They started before me. There's Atopa, there's Danlati, uh, there's Afia Barcelona, there's Mr. Carter. There are people around my age in Sebre, Pulpit, Jephtha. There are so many. There's a whole industry over there. We have comedy clubs. In Kumasi, yeah, just like we have some here. So, it's, but this is bigger. There are more comedians here, more shows. But there's also a vibrant uh, comedy industry in Kumasi. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for the enlightenment about what's going on in Kumasi uh, when it comes to comedy. But before I let you go, let's talk about comedy jokes, the jokes that you put out there. Do you write it? Because uh, I heard from one legendary comedian that you have to be able to write your own jokes and practice them for well several uh, several times before uh, you you crack those jokes. Do you do that? And what what what's your style? What do you do? Uh, what he said is is, is is true. To each comedian in their own, we have different types of comedy, but. Uh, I write. When you get the inspiration and there's no show, you need to write it down, otherwise you forget. It's just a thought, a passing thought. So you write it down and then sometimes we work it out at the comedy club. We tell our audience and when they laugh, we know that this joke is good. And then we come and do it to a bigger crowd like this. So that's basically how we do it. Other times we improvise. We're looking at the audience and we are, we are uh, it's called improvisation in comedy or crowd work. You can see someone's dress in the crowd, you make a joke. Uh, we don't want to hurt the person. People think we are mean or no. We just want to make us, everyone laugh about something that we've all seen as funny. And then, uh -huh. so basically, that is improv. We didn't write that one. It just came over the top of your head, and then you are doing it and you are vibing with the people. Other times, we write, you go back and rewrite it. Sometimes I have a joke, I'll call old Joe or PJ or Jerry that this joke, they can help me make it better. So we, we do that. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, but before I let you go, finally, in the comedy industry, what would you like to see change or work for the comedy industry or the growing comedy industry, apart from the supports that you need from uh, uh, the masses? Uh, we also need corporate support, apart from the masses. Now we have the masses. Even me, when I do shows, I sell out. <coughs> but we need the companies to sponsor us. More companies uh, sponsor us, but... They are coming just little by little. We need more. That is one thing the Nigerians have that we don't have. Yo, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you can see my phone is buzzing. Everybody is calling me. They are calling me. Yeah, first time Romano is saying that congratulations. Yeah. So we need more corporate support, like big, big companies. They should come and rally behind us so we can take Ghana comedy to the world. Definitely, mm, we need to take Ghana comedy to the rest of the world. And that'll be all for Showbiz here this sure. And that's all we have time for in this hour. You can log on to myjoyonline.com for more stories. My name is Carlos Calodi. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening.